This is an excerpt from the audiobook of From Coping to Thriving, How to Turn Self-Care into a Way of Life by Hannah Brame from becomingwhoyouare.net. 26. Create a Self-Care Kit Needs Acceptance, affection, appreciation, closeness, compassion, consideration, consistency, empathy, intimacy, love, nurturing, self-respect, support, authenticity, presence, play, peace, autonomy, space, awareness, growth, self-expression, to matter. This suggestion is about going to the spa. Not a spa spa, mind you. This suggestion is about finding a balance that enables us to dedicate time to our pleasure, relaxation, and well-being without compromising other needs, such as our need to be able to buy groceries or feel financially secure. In that way, think about it as more of a metaphorical spa. As we've already discussed, self-care is not about taking yourself out for manicures, Colombian waxes, or whatever the latest fashion trend is at the time of reading. It's about meeting your needs. If you're on a budget or short on time, you're not going to meet your needs by buying expensive treatments or taking several hours you don't have out of your day. In fact, doing this will probably stress you out even more. Having said that, there's a reason why plenty of people opt for professional treatments and attention over a purely aesthetic motive. Showing your body some TLC feels good. It is certainly one form of self-care. It's just that we need to find a way to treat our bodies well without compromising any other needs we might have that are jostling for attention alongside. As I said in the introduction, self-care isn't so much about what we do, it's about meeting our needs so we might not be able to go to a fancy spa without leaving one or more of our other needs waiting anyway, but we can certainly try to recreate the feeling of going to a fancy spa. One way to do this is to create a self-care kit. How it works. The self-care kit is a collection of items that provoke your desired feelings. This is a very personal experience, so I'm not going to provide a prescriptive list for what should go in your self-care kit. Instead, the first step is to work out what your desired feelings are. What is it you would like to feel or experience after using your self-care kit? This might include feeling safe, nurtured, held, warm, relaxed, rejuvenated, replenished, whole, connected, compassionate, self-accepting, understanding, rested, or any other words that are meaningful to you. The next step is to translate these feelings into actions. What can you do that will help you get to these feelings and experiences? Here are a few suggestions to get you started. Meditate, gentle yoga, face mask, long hot bath, incense, quotes or affirmations, special music, a good book, a journal, a scented candle. Your own personal self-care kit might contain all of these, or it might contain none of them. As I said, this is a personal experience, so spend time thinking about how you can recreate your desired feelings with simple everyday items and activities. Once you have a few ideas about the kind of things you might want in your self-care kit, start compiling it. Begin simply and test each individual item out for its effectiveness before adding the next. Sometimes we think a certain item or activity is going to provoke certain feelings, but it doesn't. We might expect it to be relaxing and enjoyable, whereas in reality, we find it uncomfortable and distracting. Equally, we might experience one activity or item in our kits very differently to how we imagined. There's no rush. Start small and build your kit over a period of several weeks or months. Schedule time to use your self-care kit and commit to that scheduled time. Whether it's 15 minutes when you first get up or you set aside a whole evening, dedicate time. Listen to how your self-care kit leaves you feeling and listen to what your gut tells you to add or remove to enhance it and make it more effective at meeting your needs. Why it works. 
Like the mini retreat suggestion in the next section, the self-care kit is tailored specifically to you and executed on your terms. You're in complete control over how much time and money you spend on your experience, as well as when you choose to use your kit. This allows you to experience your desired feelings, set aside time to reconnect with yourself, and give your body some TLC without denying or ignoring other needs you might have, for example, a need for financial stability. Other thoughts. As you're probably aware, it's possible to spend a lot of time and money on so-called self-care items without even setting foot in a spa. If you're concerned that engaging with this suggestion might provoke your money gremlins and inner critic, keep them at bay by setting some boundaries. This might take the form of a monthly self-care budget, a limit on the number of items you have in your kit, a limit for how much to spend on each item in your self-care kit, or all of the above. On a practical note, remember that some items might cost more but will last longer or indefinitely than other items that cost less. Be as generous as you can be with your budget. Remember, there's nothing wrong with spending money on yourself while still keeping your other needs in mind. If you enjoyed listening to this excerpt from From Coping to Thriving, How to Turn Self-Care into a Way of Life, you may want to listen to the rest of the audiobook. You can find it on Amazon, iTunes, and Audible. You might also like the author's website, becomingwhoyouare.net, where you can find more content related to what you've just heard from the author, Hannah Brame.